Hello, my name is Jose Garcia, and in this video, I'm going to show you a little bit of what the Fluxible modeling package has to offer uh, in Creo 5.0. So this is version 5.0, and what I've done is I've essentially created this piece of geometry in Creo. I exported it as a parasolid, and then I brought it back in. So now you can see if you look over here in the model tree, there's really nothing that's telling me how this piece was made. It's just there. So it's essentially a dumb body, right? Nothing tells me uh, how this round was added or how if, if there's even something inside of this nothing uh, so what is a little challenging right is making edits to this if you don't have access to the original features now let's say that I am tasked with having to replace this face here with a more curvy surface right that's a little bit challenging now to add a little more spice to that I also want you to preserve this round or this edge blend. I don't want it to be impacted by the uh, replacement of the face. So let's get started. I'm gonna come up here to the model tab and I'm gonna offset a datum plane from the face that the Z axis touches last, which is going to be that face there. Now I'm gonna offset it by a value of seven and then I'm gonna hit okay. Now remember, Creo keeps the thing you selected or the thing that you created last in queue. So because I created this datum plane last, it keeps it in queue and it's still selected. So I'm going to hit that extrude button there and it throws me right into Sketcher. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a rectangle here, almost in the middle, right? Nothing too crazy, nothing too extravagant. I only care that that surface gets replaced by a more curvy surface. So what I'm going to do now is once I have that nice rectangle there, I'm going to activate the spline tool and I'm just going to draw a random spline, boom, 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 like that. And you can see that there is my spline right there. I'm also going to come over to the delete segment and remove these top curves like that. Okay. And I'm going to say, okay. And I'm going to extrude it by a value of three. Now notice how this piece of geometry in the Z direction, it is significantly smaller than our original piece of geometry, our dumb body. So is Creo going to be able to calculate this? Is it not going to know after three inches how much it has to compensate? Well, let's find out together. I'm going to come up here to the flexible modeling. <laughs> I sometimes have a little trouble saying that, but then I'm going to go in here and say substitute. Now, I'm going to expand these references here, and it says, select surfaces to substitute. So I'm going to select that surface, because that's the surface I want to get rid of, and I'm going to come down here and click on this little purple box. That way, I am selecting within this context, and it says, select substituting surfaces. I'm going to select that surface there, and look at that. Even though this piece of geometry is significantly smaller, Creo doesn't care. It is able to calculate how it's going to replace the face of our original geometry. And in addition, it keeps that round. So as you can see, the round is not impacted. And to compensate, it made this rod a little bigger. So that is a really powerful thing that Creo has to offer. So I'm going to go ahead and say confirm. And now I'm happy with this piece of geometry. So that is how you use the substitute command in the flexible modeling package in Creo.